now that we've done the basics of evolution and evolution according to natural selection, we're going to move on and look at evolution of man, of humans, homo sapiens. The chapter is called hominid studies and this is because hominid studies is the area a uh, field of study that tries to determine the origin of modern man as i said homo sapiens which is our genus and species name now the classification of humans and human ancestors and the fossils that they find within hominid study is based on three parts or three bits of evidence the first is called archaeology the next is called paleontology and the next is called anthropology and you can see these three definitions here archaeologists study human artifacts and human remains Paleontologists will study fossils to discover the evolutionary history of the planet and organisms on the planet, while anthropologists will study human cultures, their languages, societies and artifacts. Many of Egypt's most famous monuments, such as the Sphinx and pyramids and so on, contain hundreds and thousands of marine fossils. So these fossils are intact and preserved in the walls of the pyramids. So paleontologists, anthropologists and archaeologists will work together when they look at a pyramid to, to figure out what went on at that time in history. Hominid study includes the studies of hominids and hominins. Now the spelling is important here because hominids, the word with a D in, will include humans, great apes and extinct bipedal human ancestors, while hominins with an N only include humans and our bipedal ancestors. Now the classification of homin hominids um, is a big area of debate. So if you look at this, this flow chart, it's a family pedigree of the evolution of man, but it's one of those. Now you'll note there it says, don't learn it, only understand it. So if you get given a diagram like this in an exam, you just need to be able to interpret what's going on here. So if we read it, we're going to read it from the top to the bottom. If we start looking where the blue arrow is, we can see that um, the line goes down and then splits into two. Now that blue arrow there represents the common ancestor of monkeys, apes and modern humans. And as we studied um, and we looked at allopatric speciation, we realized that a single ancestral population splits into two. And according to this diagram, monkeys and gimmons that have tails is one area in which one species in which um, this ancestral group um, evolved into and then modern humans and apes is the other group humans and apes um, evolved from an ape like creature so an ancestral population group that had certain traits that were more ape like and some that had human were more human like now it's important that we understand that these traits that humans and apes have in common is what puts us in the same ape-like ancestry group of hominids. So this acronym, Ape Equals Man, will help you remember the six traits that apes and man have in common. The first A stands for arms with hands with five fingers and then two feet with five toes. The P is for precision grip because of an opposable thumb. Now, precision grip is only possible because the thumb is pointing in a different direction to the four fingers, giving us a stronger grip and a more articulate grip. The E is for eyes with stereoscopic vision. So since both our eyes are facing forward and is in the front, our eye sockets are in the front of our skull, it means that we have depth perception. We can see in 3D. You can try and cover your one eye with an eye patch and then walk up and down a staircase and you'll quickly see, oops, you can't judge how far the stairs are, how, how, how the distance that you need to put your foot down. The M is for molars and premolars with rounded cusps. Now the molars and premolars are the back big teeth in your mouth and in humans and in apes these have rounded edges in, instead of sharp edges like you do in other herbivores. The second A is for the ability to see color, and in the N is for having no tail. 
So if you look at this slide again, um, you can see that although we said humans have evolved from an ape-like ancestor, on this, uh, in this text box, the shaded one, we can actually see all the big swear word names of the intermediate species on this human evolution journey. So the Australopithecus is the oldest or uh, furthest back species. And then as time goes past, we end up with Homo sapiens and Homo neanderthalensis, which is the most recent species. Now, the classification of hominids is an ongoing debate because of recent um, evidence, genetic evidence. So if you look at this diagram, according to this, Homo erectus is an ancestral group that evolved into Homo sapiens and Homo neanderthalensis. But as you remember, early in the 2000s, they succeeded in mapping the human genome with the Human Genome Project. And since then, people have gotten really, really curious and used that same technology to actually map out the genome of Neanderthals. Now, Neanderthals are frozen fossils. So there was hundreds of them found, and because of the cold areas, some of their DNA was preserved really, really well. So this guy um, is one of the leading scientists in the Neanderthal Genome Project, and you can see the very handsome photo on the on the right hand side there of a Neanderthal. And with the uh, Neanderthal Genome Project, they realized that we not necessarily evolved from the same group. We might as well be the same or have interbred. Sadly, that the Neanderthal DNA that was found or is available in the fossils are not one hundred percent complete. So the genoming is done on a huge portion of their DNA, but not complete. So that's where the debate is on. Some scientists are saying they are completely human or so very close related, while others say, no, 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 the bit of information that is missing makes us two complete different species. And the debate is going to go on because no one was there to know the facts. So we will study human ancestry according to this flow diagram, um, because it's a debate and this is what South African syllabus is like. So this is what we're going to look like. Um, according to this, Homo sapiens and Homo neanderthalensis are related but not the same species.